Hi, welcome back to the trigonometry lectures on educator.com. Today we're going to learn about the double angle formulas. So here they are. The first one is sine of 2x is equal to 2 sine x cosine x. And you may think, oh, there's so many formulas to remember in trigonometry. This one, if you have trouble remembering it, you can work it out from the addition formula. So you do have to remember something. But if you can remember that sine of a plus b is equal to sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b. Well, if you remember that one, then you don't really need to learn anything new here because you can work it out so quickly. Just take a and b both to be x in the, in the addition formula. And then if a is x and b is x, then what you get here is sine of 2x is equal to sine x cosine x plus cosine x sine x. And so what you get is just 2 sine x cosine x. So if you can remember the addition formula, the double angle formulas are really nothing new to remember here. Same goes for the cosine x, cosine 2x formula. If you remember the addition formula for cosine, you might want to try just plugging in x for each of the a's and b's. And you'll see that what you get is exactly cosine squared x minus sine squared x. Now there are two other ways that you often see this formula written as 2 cosine squared x minus 1 and 1 minus 2 sine squared x. And those might look different, but actually you can figure them out very quickly or check them very quickly because 2 cosine squared x minus 1 is 2 cosine squared x minus, now remember, 1 is the same as sine squared x plus cosine squared x. And so if you work with that a little bit, you have 2 cosine squared minus cosine squared, so that's just a single cosine squared x minus sine squared x. And so all of a sudden this goes back to the original formula for cosine of 2x. And you can do this, you can check the second formula the exact same way. If you convert the 1 into sine squared plus cosine squared, you'll see that it converts back into this original formula for cosine of 2x. So even though it looks like there's four new formulas to remember here, really the basic sine of 2x and cosine of 2x, you can work both of those out from the addition formulas. And then the other two formulas for cosine, you can just work them out if you remember the original formula for cosine and then the Pythagorean identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, which certainly any trigonometry student is going to remember the Pythagorean identity. So it's really not a lot of new memorization for these formulas. The more interesting question here is how are you going to use them? So let's try them out on some examples. So our first example here is we're just going to get some practice using the, the sine and cosine of 2x formulas, the double angle formulas, to find the sine and cosine of 2 pi over 3. So even though 2 pi over 3 is a common value, Hopefully you can work out the sine and cosine of 2 pi over 3 without using the double angle formulas. We're going to try them out, try them out using the double angle formulas, and then we'll just check that the answers we get agree with the values that we know coming from the common values. So we'll use that as a check. We won't use that at the beginning. We're also going to use all three of the formulas for cosine and just check and make sure that they all work out and that they all agree with each other. So let's start out by remembering those two formula, those actually four formulas. Sine of 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. And cosine of 2x is cosine squared x minus sine squared x. And here we're being asked to find the sine and cosine of 2 pi over 3. So we're going to use x equals pi over 3. That way 2x, whoops, pi over 3, that way, 2x is 2 pi over 3. So sine of 2 pi over 3, using x equals 2 pi over 3, it's 2 sine of pi over 3 times cosine of pi over 3. And I remember that the sine of pi over 3, that's a common value. 
So the sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. Cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. So the 2 and that 1 half cancel. And what I get is root 3 over 2. And now let's try the cosine. Cosine of 2 pi over 3 is cosine squared of pi over 3 minus sine squared of pi over 3, according to our formula. But we're going to check it out and see if it works. Now, cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half, so 1 half squared, minus the sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2, so we'll square that out. 1 half squared is 1 fourth. Root 3 over 2 squared is, root 3 squared is 3, 2 squared is 4. So we get 1 fourth minus 3 fourths is negative 1 half. Now there were two other formulas for cosine um, of 2x, and we want to check out each one of those. Cosine 2x is equal to 2 cosine squared x minus 1. And it was also supposed to be equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared x. So we're going to check out each one of those. So cosine of 2 pi over 3, using those other formulas, is equal to 2 cosine squared of pi over 3 minus 1, which is 2. Now cosine of pi over 3, is that's a common value. That's 1 half. 1 half squared minus 1 which is 2 times 1 fourth minus 1, which is 1 half minus 1, is negative 1 half. And let's use the other version, um, 1 minus 2 sine squared of pi over 3. I'm going to use the last cosine formula there. So that's 1 minus 2. Now, sine of pi over 3, I remember that's a common value, root 3 over 2. So we're going to square that out. That's 1 minus 2 times root 3 squared is 3. And 2 squared is a fourth. So that's 1 minus 3 halves, negative 1 half. So the first thing we notice is that these three different formulas for cosine of 2x, they all gave us the answer negative 1 half. So they do check with each other. That's reassuring. But now let's work out the sine and cosine of 2 pi over 3 just using the old-fashioned common values. So let me draw my unit circle. So there's 0, pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2. 2 pi over 3 is 2 thirds of the way from 0 to pi. So there it is right there. That's my 30, 60, 90 triangle. So I know the values there are root 3 over 2 and 1 half. And I just have to figure out the sine and cosine, or, or the which ones are positive and which ones are negative. I know that the cosine of 2 pi over 3, because that's the x value and the x value is negative, that's negative 1 half. The sine of pi over 2 pi over 3 is the y value, which is positive, so that's root 3 over 2. And look, we worked those out just looking at the unit circle and remembering the common values, but that checks out with the values we got from the formulas there, sine of 2 pi over 3 and each one of the formulas for cosine of 2 pi over 3. So what we were doing there is working out each one of the formulas for sine of 2x and cosine 2x with x equals pi over 3. That separates it out into uh, expressions in terms of sine and cosine of pi over 3, which I remember. So I just plug those in, and I get the sine and cosine of 2 pi over 3. All the cosine formulas agree with each other. And they all check with the values that I can find just by looking at a unit circle. So our next example is to use the double angle formulas to prove a trigonometric identity. And it's not so obvious how to start with this one. We're actually going to start with the right hand side because it looks more complicated. So I'm going to start with the right hand side. And that's 
2 tangent of x over 1 plus tangent squared of x. So I'm evaluating the right-hand side. I'm going to work with it a bit, and hopefully I can simplify it down into the left-hand side, but we'll see how it goes. First thing I'm going to do is change everything into sines and cosines. That's a good rule when you're, when you're not sure what to do with a trigonometric identity, is to change everything into sines and cosines. If you've got a tangent, or a secant, or a cosecant, or cotangent, convert it into sines and cosines. It'll probably make your life easier. So I'll write this as 2 tangent, remember, is sine over cosine. And 1 plus tangent squared, that's 1 plus sine squared x over cosine squared x. Now I see a lot of cosines in denominators here. I think I'm going to try to clear those out. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by cosine squared x and see what happens with that. That's multiplying by 1, so that's safe. On the top, I have 2 sine x. Now I had a cosine x in the denominator, but I multiplied by cosine squared, so that gives me cosine x in the numerator. And then in the bottom, I have cosine squared times 1 plus sine squared over cosine squared, so that gives me 1 times cosine squared is cosine squared x, plus the cosine squared cancels with that denominator, sine squared x. And now look at this. The top is exactly 2 sine x cosine x. I remember that. That's my formula for sine of 2x. So sine of 2x. Now the bottom, that's the Pythagorean identity. So that's just 1. Cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So this converts into sine of 2x. But that's equal to the left-hand side of what we were trying to prove. So we started with the right-hand side because it looked a little more complicated there. I see a bunch of tangents. I'm not so sure what to do with those. I convert them into sines and cosines. I see lots of cosines in the denominator, so I multiply top and bottom by cosine squared x. And then I start noticing some formulas that I recognize. 2 sine x cosine x is a double angle formula. And cosine squared plus sine squared, that's the Pythagorean identity, it reduces down into the right-hand side. So let's try another example here. We're going to use the addition and subtraction formulas to derive a formula for tangent of 2x in terms of tangent x. Remember, we have formulas for sine of 2x and cosine of 2x. We're going to find a formula for tangent of 2x just in terms of tangent x. And when we get that, we're going to check the formula on a common value pi over 6, because I know what the tangent of that is, and I know what the tangent of 2x is, so we can check whether our formula works. So let me start out with tangent of 2x. Don't know much about that, except that the definition of tangent of 2x is sine of 2x over cosine of 2x. And now I'm going to use, well, it's the addition and subtraction formulas, but it's really the double angle formulas. Of course, those come from the addition and subtraction formulas. Now, sine of 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. That's the double angle formula for sine. Of course, you find that out from the addition formula. Cosine of 2x is cosine squared x minus sine squared x. That was the first uh, addition form, or the first double angle formula for cosine. Now, it's not totally obvious how to proceed next, but I know that I'm trying to get everything in terms of tangent x. Right now I've got a bunch of cosines lying around. I'd like to move those down into the denominator, and the reason is because uh, tangent is sine over cosine, so I would like to be dividing by cosines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide the top by cosine squared x, and I'll divide the bottom by cosine squared x. So we're dividing top and bottom by cosine squared x. That's dividing by 1, so that's legitimate, and we'll see what happens. Now in the numerator, we get 2 sine x we had a cosine x before. We divided by cosine squared, so we get 2 sine x over cosine x. In the bottom, 
We're dividing everything by cosine squared x. So we get 1 minus sine squared x over cosine squared x. And that's really nice, because now we have sine over cosine everywhere, and that's tangent. And we were asked to find everything in terms of tangent x. So what we get here is 2 sine over cosine is tangent x over 1 minus sine squared over cosine squared is tangent squared x. And so our formula, our double angle formula for tangent, is tangent of 2x equals 2 tangent x over 1 minus tangent squared x. Now, I didn't list this at the beginning of the lecture as one of the main formulas that you really need to memorize. It kind of depends on your trigonometry class. In some classes, they will ask you to memorize this formula, this formula for tangent 2x. I don't think it's worth memorizing in my trigonometry classes. I don't require students to memorize these formulas for tangent of 2x. I do require them to memorize sine of 2x and cosine of 2x, and then I figure they can work out the other ones from that. But you may have a teacher who requires you to memorize the formula for tangent of 2x, and if so, then here it is. Here's the formula that you want to remember. Let's check that out on a value uh, that I already know the tangent of. So let's try x equals pi over 6. The tangent of 2 times pi over 6, according to this formula, would be 2 times the tangent of pi over 6 divided by 1 minus tan squared of pi over 6. Now, pi over 6 is a common value. Tangent of pi over 6, I remember that. I've got that one memorized. It's root 3 over 3. If you don't have that one memorized, it probably is a good one to memorize, but if you don't have it memorized, you can work it out. As long as you remember sine and cosine of pi over 6, you just divide them together and you get the tangent of pi over 6. So this is 2 times root 3 over 3 over 1 minus root 3 over 3 squared. And let's do a little algebra with that. That's 2 times root 3 over 3 over 1 minus root 3 over 3 squared is root 3 squared is 3 over 3 squared is 9. So that's 3 over 9, which is 1 third. So this is 2 root 3 over 3 divided by 2 thirds. And so if we remember how you divide fractions, you flip it and multiply 3 halves. So that cancels off the 2 and the 3. This whole thing boils down to just a root 3 as tangent of 2 times pi over 6. Now, of course, 2 times pi over 6 is just pi over 3. Pi over 3 is another common value that I know the tangent of. Tangent of pi over 3, I remember, is root 3. That's a common value. But again, if you don't remember that, remember the sine and cosine of pi over 3. Divide them together, and you'll get root 3. And look at that. Our answers agree. So that confirms our formula for tangent of 2x. So to recap the important parts of that problem, we had to figure out tangent of 2x. So we wrote it as sine over cosine of 2x. We expanded each one of those using the double angle formulas that we learned at the beginning of the lesson. And then I was trying to get this in terms of tangent of 2x, so I wanted to get some cosines in the denominator. That's why I divided top and bottom by cosine squared x, and then that converted the thing into something in terms of tangent x. And then we checked that out by plugging in x equals pi over 6. That's something that I know the tangent of. Worked through the formula, and we got as our answer pi over or square root of 3. And of course, that checks the common value that I also know, tangent of pi over 3, is square root of 3. So we'll try some more examples of that later.